Hello everyone and welcome to this episode of Unearth Horticulture. Today I will be addressing a topic that many of you have expressed interest in and that is air plants. Air plants are the newest, I would say they've replaced succulents in that they are the plant that people say is easy to take care of, an easy house plant to take care of. But like succulents, I think people are finding out they're a little bit more difficult than you realize if you don't know how they work. Similar to succulents, they have an adapted leaf that works to their benefit. So in this episode, we're going to talk about the science of air plants and about how you can take care of them and enjoy them as an easy care houseplant. I have a couple variations of air plants in front of us today to take a closer look at. I wanted you to see a broad example of what you might see when it comes to this group of plants. Now, air plants are all classified under one genus, Tillandsia, and Tillandsia is a type of bromeliad, the bromeliaceae family. Now, there are a couple of other bromeliads you might have seen around, maybe at the grocery store. They're really colorful, and usually you water them in the centers. They have a little cup in the center, and they're a lot of fun. So if you haven't grown a bromeliad, I encourage you to try that one out. But uh, another one you might know is pineapple. Pineapple is in the bromeliaceae family. It's a very tropical family, and they're known as being epiphytic or hemi-epiphytic, so at least partially epiphytic. What epiphytic means, if you haven't heard that word before, it means that these plants grow upon trees. They grow in tree branches and not in the soil. So that makes sense for these air plants because they don't have roots. I think you might have noticed that by now. Sometimes air plants do throw an air root here or there, but most of the time they get their common name because they grow in the air and they're able to take humidity and moisture from the air around them. How do they do that? So they have this specialized plant structure on their leaves called a trichome. And you might have heard this term before in reference to tomatoes. Tomatoes are a tropical plant that also have trichomes, but they function in a little bit different way. Trichomes on tomato plants usually act to help keep humidity around the leaves, but they also act to release chemicals as well. Trichomes on air plants act as a sort of sponge or a hair that helps to attract water and soak it in almost like a sponge. So you'll notice on this air plant and a few of the others here in particular that there are really pronounced trichomes. They're very fuzzy and silvery looking and they have kind of a suede leather texture to them. When you get those trichomes wet, they actually, this, the plant turns a vibrant green and you can see that it's charged with water, almost like a sponge. And that's very similar to another common epiphyte that we know is the orchid. Orchids that are epiphytic have roots that turn from silver to dark green when they're charged with water, very similarly to how Tillandsia air plants look when they are charged with water. So that's the way air plants take up water. Not all plants, this is very important to understand, not all plants take up water through their leaves. In fact, most plants do not. Most plants have to take in water through their roots. Plants can lose water through their leaves, but they don't usually take up water through their leaves. So that's why air plants are known as kind of a phenomenon, a really cool plant in the plant world. Now the one I just picked up here, you'll notice is kind of smooth in texture and its trichomes are much shorter and adapted a little bit differently. But another thing to understand about trichomes is that the more pronounced they are and the more, the thicker they are, the easier it is for your air plant to retain moisture. And that comes into play and is more important as we talk more about plant care. Before we get into the watering routine you need for air plants, which is really what everybody cares about, what everybody needs to know about, let's talk about the light and temperature really quick. So since air plants hail from the tropics, they really do like ambient temperatures closer to 60 plus degrees, and they can even like up to 90 degrees temperatures. But it's important if you're keeping them by a window for lighting, that you just keep in mind they're gonna have much slower growth because it'll be cooler by your windows. That brings me to my next topic, lighting. 
Airplanes can tolerate low light for quite a while, but if you want to see any kind of new growth, they need good natural lighting, some good uh, bright indirect lighting. So I like to keep mine in a windowsill. Now let's get into the nitty and gritty. Let's get into the watering methods of air plants. Now, if you know about air plants, you may have heard of the many conflicting watering methods that are out there. You may have heard that they need a closed glass terrarium to keep the air humid around them. You may have heard that they need misting every day and that's all it takes. You may have even heard they need soaking for a good half hour before they can be deeply watered. In reality, all of these watering methods are less than ideal. And I will give you a rundown of what your watering routine should look like. First of all, the reason terrariums are not a good idea is that air plants need good air circulation. They have a tendency to rot if water is allowed to sit in the creases and crevices of the base of the leaves. So it's really important that these have really good air circulation and terrariums just don't offer that to air plants most of the time. The reason misting is not a good idea for your air plants is that it often doesn't water them deeply enough. It's really important that they have deep hydration every time you water them because misting just doesn't, doesn't quite satiate the plant. The reason I don't suggest soaking your air plants for longer than five minutes at the most is because air plants, like other plants, do not like anaerobic conditions or conditions without oxygen. 30 minutes underwater is a long time and honestly, your plants may survive, but it is just highly unnecessary. The best way to water your air plant is either to dunk them into a bath of water, swirl them around, pull them out, shake them off, and prop them back into their little, their little plant stand or area where you keep your air plants. Or you can run them under the faucet or under a watering can, under running water, until all areas, all surface areas of the leaves have been hydrated and they're turning that deep green color we were talking about. The trichomes have been charged with water. The reason you need to either dunk or run them underwater is because it not only allows for deep satiating hydration, it also keeps your air plants from being in an anaerobic condition. So misting and then soaking for 30 minutes, both are kind of on the ends, the extremes of the spectrum. We've talked about the method of watering. Let's talk about the frequency of watering. This is one thing that is extremely controversial and in the gray area for a lot of air plant enthusiasts. Now, you know your climates best. Some people have drier air in their homes than others, but air plants are really wonderful in that they turn this silvery color when they are, that when they're no longer charged with water, when they can take moisture again. So I usually suggest plants, air plants that have thicker leaves and more pronounced trichomes like these, these two guys right here, these guys can take water at one to two times a week. And in the winter, you might consider watering them twice a week because we have drier air than we do in the summer. Now this tufty little guy has thinner leaves and more surface area to lose water from not to mention less storage area in the leaves to hold water over time. So this guy I actually water every one to two days. So this is one that you want to keep in mind when they have thinner leaves, they're going to need more frequent watering. Last, this guy has very smooth leaves. Its trichomes are not pronounced. And so it doesn't have quite the capability of retaining water as well as something like this air plant would. So this is one, if you notice it getting wrinkly at the base especially, this is one air plant that may require watering at least twice a week, if not every other day like, like this tufty guy. So as you can see, their leaf form, their leaf shapes can determine greatly how frequently you need to water air plants, especially if they're smaller in size they might need a little bit more frequent watering. And then you will start to see new growth appear, new healthy growth. If you notice any kind of tip burn like I've got here on this guy, that's a sign that they could use more frequent watering. And that's just a tip to keep in mind. That's all I've got for you today. I hope that I debunked a few myths and demystified how you can successfully take care of your air plants. 
If you have any questions, as always, make sure you drop them in the comment below and start collecting your air plants. Until next time, you've been watching Unearth Horticulture.